Algebra 2 Honors, Lesson 13.7, Inverse Trigonometric Functions. Now, we've also done most of this unit, like we did with 13.6. So, here's what we need to learn to do. Read this properly. Where does sine of x equal root 3 over 2? Just learn to do that all the time, and everything's going to be great. Well, if you look on the unit circle, you'd say, oh, that happens up here and up here. So it's at pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. And you'd be correct. Remember, we want to put everything in radians from here on out. We're going to cross out the 2 pi over 3. I'll explain why in a moment. These are the same. It's called arc sine. And it's the same. Where does sine of x equal root 3 over 2? Sine to the negative first, same. Where does sine of x equal root 3 over 2? And as I just said, it's going to be at pi over 3. Only use pi over 3. Again, I'll show you why in a minute. The reason is that arc sine and sine to the negative first are what we call inverse trigonometric functions. We can only have one answer. We don't want two answers, then it's not a function. It would fail the vertical line test. So one answer. Since we only want one answer, we define the domain and the range. And we are picking this. We are saying sine can only be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Cosine can only be from 0 to pi. So when you're looking for cosine, you're looking in quadrants 1 and 2. When you're looking for sine, you're looking in quadrants 1 and 4. When you're looking for tangent, you're looking in quadrants 1 and 4. I'll draw the graphs. You're responsible for knowing them. Domain goes from negative 1 to 1. Domain's x. In this case, we go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And it looks something like this. A lot of this you won't understand until we get to our graphing unit. But it's nice sometimes to get an introduction so we can tie some loose ends together. Cosine looks like this. Notice that they're functions. They pass the vertical line test. No matter where I draw a vertical line, it only hits the line once. So again, why 0 pi for cosine? Well, it gives us positive negative. Why negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for sine? It gives us a positive negative, and we just picked those. We could have picked other quadrants. Probably wouldn't have been as intuitive. These actually make a lot of sense. So I'd like you to try these. And again, I cannot overemphasize this. Don't read arc sine root 2 over 2. Read, where does sine equal root 2 over 2? Hopefully you know it's in the first quadrant, pi over 4. We cannot use the second quadrant because arc sine does not allow us to. Sine negative first of negative root 2 over 2 is down at negative pi over 4. Why not just call it 7 pi over 4? Because we can't. It's not from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's where we have to get our signs from. If I were you, I would pause the recording and try these yourself. Because I'm going to do them now. Where does cosine equal 1? At 0. A lot of people say 2 pi, but that's not between 0 and pi, which is where we define cosine negative first, our cosine. Where does our cosine equal negative 1 half? 2 pi over 3. Where does arc tangent, where does tangent equal negative 1? Negative pi over 4. Where does tangent equal negative root 3? This one's a little tricky. We need sine to be root 3 over 2. We need cosine to be 1 half. We need one of them to be negative, so we're going to go down into the fourth quadrant because that's where tangent is. Negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 in the fourth quadrant. And we know that happens at negative pi over 3.
Now, we're to sign the negative first equal 3 over 4, and then we take the sign of it. What do you think happens with these? Correct. They cancel out. Over here, they won't. We have to go up in the first quadrant and say sine is opposite 1 over hypotenuse 2, which means that this is root 3, because root 3 squared plus 1 squared equals 2 squared. Put our theta in the notch, and we say tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent 1 over root 3, which is root 3 over 3. That's it. A lot of problems to do. Make sure you understand what's going on. You've already been introduced to this, so now you just have to tighten it up, and you just really have to watch the range and the domain to a degree, but more the range. Good luck.